Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I hope you're having an amazing day. It is Saturday, July 12th, 2014, and this is the Facts of the Matter. <clears throat> the Agony of Being Double-Minded with God Double-mindedness is cause for agony in any area. Arena. Arena. Who wants an employee who has never decided to kick it in a hundred percent with the company or someone on the athletic team who is half-hearted having our afflictions divided between God and the world is like a guy standing on two chunks of ice that are floating in opposite direction disaster is imminent here's how Francis Fenelon addressed this business of double-mindedness. Woe unto those weak and timid souls who are divided between God and their love for the world. They want and they do not want. They are torn by passion and remorse at the same time. They fear the judgments of God and those of others. They have a horror of evil and a shame of good. They have the pain and virtue without tasting its sweet consolation. Oh, how wretched they are! Ah, if they had little courage to despise the empty talk, the cold mockings, and the rash criticism of others, what peace they would enjoy in the bosom of God. There is only one way to love God, to take not a single step without Him, and to follow with a brave heart wherever He leads. No matter what you do in your day, make your decisions upon God. Ask, wait, listen. He will answer. And if he doesn't answer, don't do it. Wait, patient, patiently, until you hear from him. And if he tells you to do something, do it. Don't second guess him. Don't underestimate him. Don't say, well, I don't think I heard that properly. You know what you heard, and you need to do as you hear. Don't back down and say, oh, well, maybe I heard that wrong. Maybe that's not what he wanted. James cautioned us, cautions us that a double-minded man cannot hope to receive anything from the Lord. James chapter 1 verses 7 and 8 For not let that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you cannot choose which way you're going to go, worldly, and do as the world says is best, or just do what you know God wants you to do and what God says for you to do, so if you are struggling with a divided heart, you may want to pray this prayer. Psalms 86 verse 11 Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Or simply just say, not my will, not what I want.
I don't know what's best for me. I don't know what's right for me, Lord. You know what you, what is the best way. What is best. Not my will, but thy will be done. And that is the agony of being double-minded with God. Are you in agony today? Oh, but sister, it's so hard to let him do what he needs to do. It's so hard for me to give up control. I'm used to having it my way. You know you that free will ain't free, right? It costs you. But I've tried it and I just can't let it go. Okay. So go pick up a piece of hot coal a piece of burning wood and not let go. Same principle. Whatever you're holding on to is hurting you in the long run. It's hurting you now. It has hurted you and it will continue to hurt you. Imagine whatever that is that you're holding on to and won't freely give it over to God and let him have it forevermore. Imagine it being a piece of coal or a burning piece of wood. Cobra, even. A poisonous spider. Imagine that. Keep holding on to that piece of burning coal. That biting spider that biting cobra filling you with the poisonous venom same thing that's going on when you keep hold of whatever it is you won't let go of it's the same principle are you really going to keep hold of that coal that bur burning log that poisonous snake or spider and continue to let them burn you or bite you no you would drop it and you wouldn't pick it back up. Something to think about. Peace be in you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord have mercy on us all. I love you guys so very much. God bless.